Okay. All right, we spoke the last day about pressure and volume, and we just said we need to keep the temperature constant. What we really didn't say was why the temperature changes if you change the volume. And it's not all that obvious. You don't need to know it for exam purposes, but I said it's worth going through it anyway fairly quickly, so it'll just take two minutes, and then we'll give you a pretty cool demonstration on this. So the reason the temperature changes, and I think one of the reasons that I, I zone in on this is because temperature and pressure both have to do with the molecular motion, right? But they work on two different principles. What did we say pressure had to do with it in terms of molecular motion? Yeah, so it's collisions. You see, a number of times, okay, bounces off the surface, hits the surface, or collides, right? That's the pressure off whatever the surface is that's measuring the pressure. What is temperature? In terms of molecular motion. Speed. Yeah, it's basically the speed at which they're moving. In, in particular, it's the kinetic energy. It's mass multiplied by v squared, a half in v squared. But it's how quickly they're moving. So the two things are not necessarily related. You could change the pressure without changing the temperature, or you could try and change the temperature without changing the pressure. But generally, if you change one, you change the other. So in this case, we looked at this yesterday. If I decrease the volume, why does that change the, the pressure? Because it's more space, so it's more work. Okay, so I could do that, but would the temperature increase? Yeah. yeah. Why would the temperature increase? Because they're Why are they moving quicker? They're hitting off more things. Okay, where did they get, if they're now moving quicker, they must have more energy than they had before. Yes? Where did they get the energy from? Friction. Or they're not hitting off the sides before? They're hitting off the sides faster. Okay, if I if something hits off the surface there, does it gain energy or lose energy? Yes. So where does the energy? It's, see, it's not all that obvious. I'm not suggesting that you don't even have to know this. It never gets asked, but it's it's interesting because we do really to understand this stuff. You do have to start to think of what's going on in the molecules. So if you have the volume, why do the molecules start moving more quickly? So if there's less space to move, and there'll be more collisions. Yes. But if there's more collisions, you think you'd lose energy rather than gain energy. You're right, there will be less energy, there is less space to move in. Why would that actually make you increase in temperature? And temperature, remember, has got to do with how quickly these guys are moving. Okay. See, it's not all that obvious. We don't normally think as about it. As far as hitting off the sides, they're hitting off the molecules, the molecules, the molecules. Because friction is going against you. Know. Right, but if you've got two molecules hitting off of each other, you are, there are more collisions at a reduced volume than there were before. Are, the two of them, is the overall energy like to be less or more than it was beforehand? Less. less. So again, we've got this in a more confined space, and the temperature is going up as opposed to down. It's not because every collision makes it easier. It's the friction. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. When you say friction, friction is something I would refer to as a macroscopic phenomenon. It goes on in the big world. Friction is when I do this, and the things heat up. But to understand why that's heating up, you've got to look at the molecular motion. So why is that heating up when I do this? So it is heating up. What can I say about the molecules if it's heating up? They're moving more quickly. They've got more energy, they're moving more quickly. Where did they get the energy from? In my case, from my hands moving like this. So in fact, we could almost use that and go back here. When I go from a high volume to a low volume, what's changing? Low volume to high volume, high volume to low volume. It's changing. The thing on top is one. The thing on top. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. that was giving it its energy. Yeah, yeah. Evan. Shh. What is it, Fania? The thing on top is giving it its energy. The lid. lid. So because the lid is moving, while it's moving and only while it's moving, it's giving energy to the molecules. Because it's banging off of the molecules as it clamps down on them. So the temperature only increases while that lid is moving down. Once that lid stays down at that confined space, well then whatever temperature the molecules gained, they keep that temperature, or whatever heat they gained as a result of the lid banging off of them and making them move more quickly, they stay at that general velocity then. So it doesn't speed up while it's confined. Their molecular motion only speeds up while the volume is getting decreased. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So again, it's, it's not something you get asked, actually boys, can you just hang on that for two minutes and we'll be finished here. The reason I'm saying that is because there's a pretty cool demonstration based on that. If I now drop the volume very quickly, while I'm dropping it, the lid is colliding off with all sorts of molecules. The molecules are gaining all sorts of energy for that fraction of a second, right? And if the 
temperature outside was the same as inside, they wouldn't even lose that speed, they keep maintaining that speed. But because I'm going to speed things up very quickly, the molecules will move very quickly and they will then start, because they'll be much hotter than outside, they'll lose their heat to the outside. But before that happens, it will be very hot for a very short moment in time. So what I've got is a piston, and I just move the piston up and down. So all I'm going to do is move it down like that. Here you've got a small piece of cotton wool and a little charred paper. It's just something that will ignite pretty easily. So we're going to try this. Most of the time it works. It's not guaranteed to work. Because we should get a little bit of light, uh, we're going to start off uh, Leon with the lights off. It's known as a fire tube. I think it's even given the name, a Hyman fire tube. Three, two, get in there. Three, two. Oh, cool. Pretty impressive. So now all I have to do is edit out the in intermediate three or four minutes where I tried it before. The other thing you'll notice is a big cloud forms. Right? We'll explain what that cloud forms later on, but all you had to see there was the fact that you had no matches, nothing of any description, all you had was air heating up very, very quickly. And this has got a low flash point, a low temperature flash point. So if the temperature goes below its flash point, this thing will just ignite very, very well. Okay? So that's all there is. Thanks, James.